told my hat looked weird because I was wearing it too low. Um, there is a, a French town that hosts a very famous film festival. I never quite know how to pronounce it. I've been getting a lot of feedback on it. I've said can, cans, cons. My mother, we've established over the years, is a French teacher. So I realized I could reach out to her. I said, will you please record yourself giving the proper pronunciation of this French town that hosts a film festival? Now keep in mind, Hillary is not great with technology. <laughs> but uh, I asked her to record it, and, uh, and she did. So this is how she says you pronounce this town. Let's take a listen. I referenced the movie Air Bud because we were talking about earbuds and AirPods. And I mentioned Air Bud, basketball playing dog. Someone said Air Bud didn't play basketball, he played football. You're wrong. <laughs> you made a mistake, friend. Or to put it another way, you aired, bud. If you don't like wordplay, um, he did play football in the second. There were multiple Air Bud films. He did play the second film. It was Air Bud, Air Bud Golden Receiver, Air Bud World Pup, Air Bud Seventh Inning Fetch, Air Bud Spikes Back. This is when the critics started to turn. After Air Bud spikes back, some, not all, some of the critics said the franchise was losing its creative luster. This is cool because we have talked about, obviously, we talked about last year on the show, that obviously the same dog can't play, you know, due to lifespans, can't play. They have to replace the dog at some point. That's just, you know, the circle of life. But this is cool. The dog, whose name was actually Air Buddy, uh, was in seven of the movies before he passed away. Oh, I read that in dog movies. He was only in one. <laughs> so uh, this is the crazy thing. John, a lot of people in the comments. John Oliver did a long piece on Air Bud, like a few weeks ago. It was online only. It was fantastic. I highly recommend you go and watch our friend John's uh, piece on Air Bud that he did, uh, again, like I said, online only. Only problem was it was 15 minutes. Can you imagine? <laughs> Not for TV. 15 minutes for a digital only. Does no one respect the audience's time? Back to corrections. Some other news from our uh, late night colleagues. There you go. Someone wrote this whole show Someone wrote in the comments, this whole show is getting less and less entertaining. <laughs> I think you mean fewer and fewer entertaining. Because if I've learned anything, it's always the opposite. So um, a lot of you noticed that um, there I left the cardboard in my hat. Can't go there. And uh, the crew did too. And pretty much as soon as I walked off, everybody said, uh, 
guess now you finally know why you have Donna around. Donna is, uh, is my dresser. Uh, Donna, also the dresser uh, for SNL, best in the business. We have a lot of people here who do jobs here and job at SNL. Uh, Donna, dresser here, dresser there. Wally, obviously, cue cards here, cue cards there. Um, Lauren Michaels does night crew for both shows. <laughs> Oh, I mean, I think the craziest thing is as soon as, you know, he's suit and tie and then just goes, puts on his little carpenter outfit. <laughs> so everybody said, oh, Donna would have known to take the cardboard out. And uh, I would never run afoul of Donna. Donna is a very important person and uh, incredibly, I think you would attest to this, vindictive. I... Um, <laughs> I once accidentally, I accidentally was a little bit, a little bit short with Donna. And uh, after the show, uh, she super glued the zipper of my pants. <laughs> and she does it in a way you don't know when you pull them on. It's only when you, when you zip them up that activates the glue. And so then it's only later when you gotta go to the bathroom and you gotta like pull them, like it's like I'm like a five-year-old at a urinal. Remember when that time she kept, she did this other thing, she got someone to hem my pants like a 16th of an inch every day for a month? <laughs> and remember when I came to your office and I was like, I gotta go to the ER. I'm growing. <laughs> so I would never run afoul of Donna. With that said, I know, if I wanted to take the cardboard out of my hat, that's within my, I mean, it's, Or I would just be like, that's the way I wanted it. <laughs> hey, um, we, in this a couple weeks ago, we uh, went after people who post their uh, Wordle scores on Twitter. And a lot of you, also pretty vindictive, have now been just uh, tweeting them at me. <laughs> and I just want to say to everybody who has shared your Wordle scores with me. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> so I was talking about Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and I referenced the fact that Shoemaker is the kind of guy who drops the sir because he has no respect for the crown. And <laughs> then I was told it is a living title. You don't keep it. Well, the minute he dropped dead, there went the sir. And I was fascinated by this. And then I read more because again, part of corrections is you guys send me down a road and then I do a great deal of research to educate myself. They bring the body to the queen who takes a sword, puts it on their shoulder and goes. <laughs> we showed a cat skin instead of an x-ray. We showed a quarter pounder instead of a Big Mac. So I wrote, this is me, I wrote a joke about uh, uh, like the fact that senators don't actually, they say they want to do something about gun control and they don't do anything. And it would be like a spouse saying, I'll help with the dishes, but I don't want to get on, I don't want to get off the couch. I'm just going to attach this, this is what I wrote, I'll just uh, attach a sponge to a long stick. Now in my head, what I pictured was a long stick with a sponge on it so you could still do something. This is what graphics, I guess, this is what they thought I meant. <laughs> well, I'm not saying my idea was good, but this is idiotic. <laughs> All right, we, let's see. We had a, a shot of uh, Rudy Giuliani is like self-incriminating all the time. And we had a shot of his phone and we said, let's zoom in on that phone. And that's how we could prove his guilt. And on the phone, it said, I'm guilty. But a bunch of you pointed out that was a received message on his phone. That was not Rudy Giuliani telling someone I'm guilty. That was someone telling Rudy Giuliani I'm guilty. But we had forgot to put his outgoing text to his lawyer, which was, there you go.
Oh, is it? <laughs> 15 minutes on Air Bud. I love the guy. The crew, he kept the crew there. <laughs> like they have, they don't, like they don't have kids. We said Disneyland, but showed a picture of Epcot at Disney World. A lot of you pointed that out, a lot of you. One of you went so far to say we showed a picture of the pink monorail that had been discontinued in 2009. Um, we did do those on purpose. We have an arrangement with a government agency wherein we put mistakes about Disney, the Disney properties, and if adults correct us, we turn those names over and you're put on a list. <laughs> No one's saying you committed a crime. It's a watch list. We're just gonna watch you now. Uh, we talked about um, our new sponsor, uh, Werner's Original. Original. I guess some Germans tried to tell, I was saying original wrong. And um, I got some criticism, a very helpful uh, impression uh, a, a note, which is that um, a good uh, Werner Herzog uh, should have whispered tone and desperate curiosity. <laughs> Werner's originals are a hard candy within which lies a mystery. Together, let's take the confectionery journey together. And while we might not find the answers we're looking for, is it not possible we will learn something about ourselves? This was a terrible joke that I, I decided against. The, the rival candy was Klaus Kinski's Fitz Carameldos. <laughs> but uh, I thought better of it. Hey, um, I gave the Burn Boys, the writers of You Burnt, I gave them a little grief last week. Um, a lot of what they did was, in fact, wrong, but I said they shouldn't have put uh, an apostrophe S after CDs. I was told by an English major that you're allowed to put apostrophe S, a uh, possessive apostrophe, after uh, acronyms. So I felt terrible, um, and uh, I, went, uh, I went down to the Burn Boys' offices to apologize, uh, forgetting that um, after they do what you burnt, they give themselves the next week off. We said Wally uh, had a series of Where's Waldo books called Where's Wally. Turns out that's what the original is called. In England, it's Where's Wally. I guess for whatever reason, uh, Americans uh, thought Waldo would work better. It's, a lot of, it's Wally in a lot of places. Uh, Brazil, Australia, Ireland, all Wallys. The Netherlands. In Sweden, it's Hugo. Of course, it's not Where's Hugo, because that's English. It's Where's Hugo? <laughs> You know, uh, we don't get a lot of fan art at our show. <laughs> but we had a really nice, uh, authentic moment uh, with Wally. Wally's still here, uh, where I made a joke about uh, New Jersey, how shocking it is in New Jersey had uh, a tree. Wally scoffed. And I, I, during the monologue, asked Wally to explain his scoff. And he told us proudly that he knows there's a tree in New Jersey, because he's got two. <laughs> and, uh, and then someone made this, which is, I thought this was really great, which is meet uh, your New Jersey mobsters. Uh, and there's Wally, two trees Ferris did. <laughs> um, knowing how active Wally is, I'm assuming he got the second tree to string up a hammock. Oh, you just pull it. That's it.
Once a week, this guy. <laughs> well, um, let's see if that's everything. <laughs> see me next week. <laughs>